Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going deep on options trading, but we're going to be looking at it through the lens of deep learning. Very cool. So, you know, options are already kind of tricky, right? They're like betting on a stock, but with extra layers of complexity. Many. Exactly. And lately, options trading has just blown up, which means there's a mountain of data out there just waiting to be analyzed. And that's where a deep dive comes in. Yeah. We've got some fascinating research on using deep learning mm -hmm. to really make sense of this complex world. I'm excited to dive in. The amount of data we have now is just incredible. It's really a game changer. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. So the research paper we're looking at today argues that the traditional ways we price and trade options, they have limitations, right? Yeah, they rely on certain assumptions about the market that don't always hold up in the real world. All right, so like they often assume that option prices are mainly driven by the underlying stock's movements. But, you know, in reality, things like investor sentiment or even just news events can have a huge impact. Exactly. It's not always so straightforward. So the researchers propose this really radical idea. What if we use deep learning to cut through all that noise? Instead of complex formulas, they built a system where a neural network learns directly from the market data, kind of like teaching itself how to spot those profitable trades. It's a very elegant approach. Now, to test out their AI trader, they used a massive data set of S&P 100 options data spanning over a decade, and they focused on a specific type of option called a delta neutral straddle. Oh, yeah. Those are interesting because they basically minimize your risk from the stock price moving up or down. Mm -hmm. It's like you're creating a balanced seesaw. So you can then focus on other factors that might be influencing the options price. So it's a way of kind of hedging your bets. Exactly. Now, before we get into the details of the deep learning model itself, the researchers wanted to see how it would stack up against some of the classic trading strategies. Right. They needed some kind of benchmark. Right. So they tested their AI against strategies like just buying and holding options, basically betting that they'll go up in value. And you know, that strategy actually has performed surprisingly well historically. They also looked at momentum and mean reversion strategies. Okay, so like momentum would be kind of like betting that a hot stock will keep climbing, while mean reversion is more like betting that it'll eventually come back down to earth. Precisely. They even used several variations of each of these strategies just to make sure they were really giving their AI a run for its money. Interesting. So what did they find? Did any of those classic strategies stand out? Well, one thing that stood out was that the mean reversion strategies actually tended to outperform the momentum strategies, especially over shorter periods. Makes sense when you think about how options work, right? Their value tends to decay as they get closer to their expiration date. Exactly. So betting on them eventually dropping in price can actually be a pretty solid strategy. Okay, so we've got our benchmark. Yeah. Now let's finally meet the AI star of the show. What kind of deep learning model did they use? Well, they actually tested a whole bunch of different architectures, linear models, multi-layer perceptrons, convolutional neural networks. They even tried out LSTMs, those long short-term memory networks. Those sound pretty complex. They are, but essentially they were trying to find the best tool for the job. So who won? Drum roll, please. Uh -huh. The LSTM took the crown. That's interesting. I remember reading that LSTMs are specifically designed for handling sequential data. So it makes sense that they would excel at picking up those time-dependent patterns in the options market. Exactly. Think about how options values change over time. Yeah. The LSTM's memory allows it to see those patterns, which makes it a pretty good trader. Okay. So they have the data, they have the benchmark, and they have their winning AI model. The next question is, how did they actually train this thing to trade? Did they just feed it stock prices and let it loose? Not quite. They had a clever trick up their sleeve. Instead of simply predicting option prices, they trained it to maximize the Sharpe ratio. The Sharpe ratio. Remind me what that is. It's basically a way to measure risk-adjusted returns. It tells you how much profit you're making compared to the amount of risk you're taking. Oh, right. So it's not just about making money. It's about making money smartly. Precisely. By optimizing the model for the Sharpe ratio, they basically incentivized it to find trading strategies that were not only profitable, but also relatively safe. 
That's really cool. So after all that work, did it actually work? Did their AI trader beat the market? So the results, pretty impressive. The deep learning models consistently beat all the benchmark strategies. Like across the board, they achieve significantly higher sharp ratios. So it wasn't just luck. The AI was really onto something. But, you know, in the real world, trading isn't free. There are those pesky transaction costs like brokerage fees and stuff. Oh, for sure. You can't forget about those. And the researchers definitely didn't. They took those costs into account. I'm curious. How did they actually account for those fees? Did they just like subtract a flat fee from every trade the AI made? They actually did something a bit more sophisticated than that. They kind of built those costs into the model's learning process. So they penalized it for making too many trades. It's like they were teaching the AI to be more thoughtful, you know, to avoid racking up all those unnecessary fees. So it's like, hey, AI, every time you click buy or sell, it's going to cost you think before you trade. Exactly. And what's really interesting is that this approach, they call it turnover regularization, it worked especially well when the transaction costs were high. The AI adapted to the rules of the game. It found that sweet spot where the potential profit outweighed the cost of making the trade. It sounds like the AI was starting to think like a real trader, weighing the risks and rewards, not just jumping on every opportunity. That brings up an interesting question, though. Could these AI systems eventually get so good that they replace human traders altogether? Now, that's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something people are talking about. I mean, this research is still early stage, but it gives us a glimpse into a future where AI could have a much bigger role in finance. But for now, I think it's best to think of these systems as powerful tools that can help us make smarter decisions, not necessarily replace us. Okay, so not a robot takeover just yet. There's still a human element involved. Yeah. What else stood out to you from this research? Anything that surprised you? Let me see. One thing I found interesting was their focus on using a small number of really key features to describe the options, like, you know, the price relative to the underlying stock, uh, time until it expires and things like that. They called it a parsimonious feature set. Why is that important? Wouldn't it make sense to just feed the AI as much data as possible, give it the best chance to find those hidden patterns? You'd think so, right? But sometimes more data isn't always better. Adding a bunch of irrelevant features can actually make the model perform worse. It can get bogged down by noise and make the results harder to interpret. So it's kind of like that saying Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is often the best. Exactly. So by keeping things simple, they created a more efficient model and they could actually understand which factors were driving the AI's decisions. That makes sense. So now I'm wondering, what does all this mean for the average person? Should I be running out to buy some fancy deep learning software and start trading options like a pro? I wouldn't recommend that just yet. This research is really exciting, don't get me wrong but it's still experimental. It's more about showing the potential of deep learning in this area, but there's still a lot more work to be done. So it's not like a get rich quick scheme, mm -hmm. but it does hint at a future where AI could really help us navigate these complex financial markets. Absolutely. Okay, so we've talked a lot about how this AI trader works, mm -hmm. but we haven't really touched on the bigger picture. What are the implications of unleashing AI on something as complex and potentially volatile as the financial markets? That's a great point. And honestly, it deserves its own deep dive. We've seen how impressive deep learning can be. But as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. As we keep exploring the potential of AI and finance, we need to think about the ethical considerations. You know, make sure these powerful tools are being used responsibly for the benefit of everyone. That's a really important point, I think. So we've covered a lot in this deep dive. From the limitations of those traditional option pricing models to the potential of deep learning to change the way we trade. But the conversation doesn't end here, does it? Definitely not. This research opens up a whole new world of questions and possibilities. And it really highlights how important it is to stay ahead of the curve. Understanding these new technologies is going to be crucial as AI plays a bigger role in shaping the future of finance. Couldn't agree more. So if there's one key takeaway you want our listeners to walk away with today, what would it be? I think it's this. Deep learning is not just some buzzword. It's a powerful tool that's already transforming so many industries, and finance is no exception. This research shows what it can do in the world of options trading, but it also raises important questions about the broader implications, you know? Yeah, it's a powerful tool. You know, like any tool, it can be used for good or for bad. As we move forward, we have to use AI responsibly and ethically, with the right safeguards in place to protect investors and the integrity of the markets. Exactly. It's about finding the right balance. It really makes you think where all this is headed. I know, right? 
We've seen how this AI trader can potentially outperform those traditional strategies. But like we said, it's still early days. Exactly. It's like we've just opened this door to a whole new world of possibilities in finance. But with any new frontier, there are going to be uncharted territories and, you know, potential risks. Especially when you consider just how quickly technology evolves. What's cutting edge today could be totally outdated tomorrow. That's why it's so crucial to approach all these AI advancements with, you know, a balanced perspective. We need to be excited about the potential benefits, but also aware of the challenges that come with, you know, integrating AI into something as complex as the financial markets. It feels like we're at this tipping point. AI is already changing the financial landscape and its influence is only going to grow. No doubt. And that's going to create both opportunities and challenges for investors, regulators, for everyone, really. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, we'll wrap up this episode. Thanks for joining us on this journey of exploration. And until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep diving deep into the world of knowledge. Mm -hmm.